Hey guys, it's Ranger Red, and welcome back to another League of Legends video. And today we are going to be continuing to explore the Council Archives. And as for today, uh, literally just today, um, I literally just woke up so I can like get this video done. Uh, we are going to be exploring the Arcane Archives for Caitlyn. Research Caitlyn's files. Who does he work with? Who does he work for? Alright, so let's uh, click right here. And here we are. This is the sort of uh, wait. Let me just get the so I so you guys can see where it is. So right here was uh, Jace's journals, and here was uh, the warden's write-ups uh, regarding Vi. And today we are going to be going here into this uh, pretty out space here of uh, Caitlyn. And here we are. This is all the stuff here. Um, so I think we're going to start right here. And there's a little picture of Vi. All right, let's read this. Okay. <clears throat> Pin photo of inmate 516. The wavy pink hair, the self-inked tattoos, it's a realistic painting of former inmate 516. No, not, not a painting, but an image captured from reality. A moment frozen in time with this zonite urchin. Uh, in, all you've, in all you've researched, there was no indication that the criminal was even capable of smiling. But in this picture, she is laughing. Okay, so it says former inmate uh, 516. It's because that's uh, the reason. Um, and it's the main reason um, that Vi got freed. And it's all thanks to Caitlyn. Uh, yes, she got her own tattoos. It's self-inked. And I really love the fact that uh, it says that it's not a painting. Instead, it's an image. And I think it's because the photograph or like the... The cameras are actually relatively new to Zon, or relatively new to both Zon and Piltover. So that's actually pretty cool. So let's go right here, which is um, sort of like, I forgot what they're called, but it's like pin boards for like evidence and like tracing, tracing evidence. So let's see what there is here. There's like a chem tank uh, guy who is infected. And here are like two members of the Fireflies, particularly this guy right here. He is con he is Echo. That is Echo. All right, let's see. What is this? Uh, conspiracy board. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if that's what it's actually called, but it's just a board. Uh, there's something about uh, Kiraman's uh, tenacity that's both inspiring and downright dumbfounding. That she would risk her job, her reputation, and her very life to pursue a case after nearly dying. You recognize this quote-unquote conspiracy board confiscated from the Interpid uh, office, uh, Enforcer's house. She was three steps ahead of everybody, working alone. Imagine what she could have done with Piltover's resources. So I, so yeah, this was basically where they were basically just tracing down uh, what is leading up to Silco. There are people that, and apparently I think this was, um, still trying to uncover like who Silco is working for and like if the Fireflies are actually working with Silco and stuff like that and you know the Chemtech Barons I think they're called um, like where they trace back and such like that but it's, it's a whole uh, icky picky stuff and look at this beautiful lady right here training rifle you've seen rifles like this of course slung over the shoulder of every enforcer in Piltover but this one appears to be built for a smaller frame and while the weapons of your typical I officer were are merely functional, this gun is irrefutably expensive. Its receiver is a glossy as the day it was made. Like its owner, it was never meant to see battle or hardship. You know all too well that she had different plans. Okay, so in the Arcane series, this was the training rifle that um, Caitlyn used in like a comp in a hunting competition alongside um god damn it i forgot her name but she was like the lady enforcer warden or lady enforcer like a uh, commissioner that died in this in the series um it was in act two act one i'm i if i could remember correctly and this was the rifle that she was using in that competition against her and i really love the moment and there was this moment in the in the series that I really love, where uh, 
Lady Kierman, I think, I'm pretty sure that's her name, where she said, do you think I, it was something along the lines of, like, do you think the gun is made to kill and something like that, and so on and so forth, but the way that she is trying to speak to Caitlyn is that you should use the rifle to protect and not to kill. You know, kind of like that. Okay, so where do we start? Uh, start with that too. Uh, okay, route to robbery. And there are eight sections. This is fantastic. All right. Oh, it's individual papers though. All right. Uh, cold cases seek captain's approval before opening. Well, I'm opening it anyways. Oh God, that is a lot. Oh, who is that? I can't tell who that is. Maybe it's a flint here. Okay. Oh, uh, root to. Uh, hom hom I'm not gonna say that word. Uh, it, illegal word. Uh, incident number 1972. Um, tilt over enforcer department. Incident information. Time of incident. Cross location. Cross. Uh, cross street or landmark. The last drop. Okay, I don't know where that is. Okay, let's uh, read this. Uh, victim information. Victim type human. Name Grayson. Age. Um, within middle age, so he's like around late 20s, 30s. Uh, sex, female, eye color, brown. Uh, hair length, color, short and black. Uh, facial hair, there's none. Uh, their weight is muscular. Uh, scars and tattoos, there's none. Uh, offense victim of illegal word. Uh, weapons involved, unknown. Okay, so I think this is about uh, this uh, lady right here, or she's actually the victim in this um, in this case. I'm pretty sure she's the victim, or maybe she is the suspect, maybe. Okay, suspect information, name, eye color, weight unknown, age is unknown. Uh, yeah, everything's unknown for the suspect. So I think, yeah, this is, I think this is actually the victim. Okay, crime narrative. Uh, Captain Grayson was investigating a call in the Undercity when she was attacked by an unknown assailant. Marks on her body are consistent with attacks by that of a large animal. There is no evidence of the animal's origin or potential owner. No predators capa uh, capable of inflicting such wounds are known to exist in Piltover. Hold up a second. Hold up a second. Is this a setup to Season 2, Riot? Is this a setup for season two of Arcane Riot? I I see you. I see you. Okay, please make this Warwick. I'm pretty sure this is Warwick. If not, I'm be disappointed. I'm pretty sure because it says, get, get me back in. Because it says, no predators are capable of inflicting such wounds are known to existence in Piltover, and it says that it is a t and and it, and it says that the assailant was a um. Uh, by an animal. By a large animal. It has to be Warwick. It really has to be Warwick. There's no one else. Okay. Uh, could the attacker have been human? That's crossed out. Could a human have made those uh, marks? So that's the main question. And who closed this case? Okay, so I think that... I think it's because that this case was so, like, extreme that they decided to close it down. All right. Uh, autopsy report, uh, about Grayson, uh, because I'm not going to read the rest of it because it's crossed out. Age is unknown, race is human, sex is female, okay. Um, and yeah, the same information as the last page. So here's the sort of autopsy for the person, I think. Okay, deep slashes across the chest and back caused massive internal bleeding. Yeah, it has to be Warwick. Probable cause of death. Blood loss attribute, attribute to an animal attack. Yeah, it has to be Warwick. It has to be Warwick. There's no one else. Okay. Uh, cold cases ca seek approval uh, before opening. Okay, well, I'm opening it anyways again. Okay, this has to be about someone else then, I think. Uh, Piltover Department, incident of information. Uh, incident number three, uh, 3021. Uh, route to uh, illegal word, I shall not say. Okay, name is crossed out, so this is the victim information. Uh, green eye color, heavy set, uh, which is the weight. Offense victim of robbery, destruction of property, and, and illegal word. Um, weapons involved, unknown, uh, around 30s to late 20s. 
hair length or color, there's none. Uh, the height, there is tall. He is a, a male. Facial hair, full beard, and red scars, tattoos, missing right leg. Okay, so he's missing a, a right leg. I cannot recall anyone in the lore who looks like this. Okay, suspect. Um, information, uh, name, eye color unknown, but the weight is muscular, um, age is unknown, hair color is long and black, uh, very tall, very descriptive, and the rest is unknown. Okay, uh, crime narrative. Oh, this is long. During the night of blank, an unknown person entered the business of blank. The suspect entered through the door, which was found ripped off of its hinges by investigators. The sound of the break-in uh, alerted uh, no one, uh, blank or some, sorry, uh, who rushed from his uh, dump uh, <clears throat> uh, a little upstairs uh, with a legally owned firearm. Okay, uh, he discovered the suspect uh, ramaged uh, through his possessions. A witness overhead of the victim give the suspect a verbal warning, or gave the suspect a verbal warning. This was followed by the sounds of shattering glass and heavy objects being tossed around. The witness uh, reports hearing the victims fire several shots in rapid succession. Okay, so he basically was just going full auto, basically. A scream let out that the witness recognized as belonging to the victim. Suspect was seen fleeing the scene holding a large club-like object. Inventory documents revealed that a stash of medical items worth approximately an uh, is missing from the premise. Okay, so this was basically an armed robbery. I think. I mean, it is pretty much an armed robbery, but what's the purpose? Okay, suspect displayed unparalleled strength and constitution. Showed diminished uh, cognition, did not respond to victim. What did they take? Okay, so since, okay, so since he displays a strength that is not human, it has to be something else. Hembaron, basically, or something else. But he is. Hmm. All right, this is weird. Autopsy report. Um, yep, male. Okay, this is uh, just the same. Okay, what's what's happened? Okay, several slashes across the body caused massive internal bleeding. These were deep cuts, seemingly random. The work of a crazed individual. The right leg was removed from above the knee. Uh... The right leg, w um, yeah, it was removed by the knee, or above the knee. Uh, the wound is old and healed. It had been amputated some time ago. Okay, I'm pretty sure this has to be re relating to Warwick still. It has to be. Probable cause of death. Blood loss attributed to a type of a serrated blade. No. I don't think so. Oh, what is this? Uh... Partial transcript of recorded interview date uh, on uh, crossed out location officer of Piltover enforcement uh, persuaded to case 3021. All right, so this is the previous case. So this is the um, interrogation, I think. Uh, this inter or interview, sorry, this interview is being recorded. I am Officer Junior Officer Caitlin Kierman, uh with the Piltover uh, enforcers. Can I get your full name? And the R and RH uh, states his full name. Uh, Caitlin says thank you. Um, sorry. Uh, you know, they already got my information. I came in before. And we appreciate that you are... And we appreciate your cooperation. Caitlin says... RH... Uh, can, I, can I scroll? Okay, so... RH says... Uh, so, why am I here again? Caitlin uh, tells him... Uh, you told our, you told our reporting officer that you notice the suspect fleeing, uh, fleeing with a club-like object. Sure, sounds like something I would have said. God damn it! Okay, so this is like 
so this is something like a lot of people would say when they're inter when they're getting interrogated. Uh, where was I? God damn it! I lost where I was. Let me just. Can I drag? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um. Do you think that? Uh. Do you think that could have been a prosthetic leg? You know. Now that I think about it, maybe it could have been. Okay. So I think this is referring to like the right leg that was missing. I suppose some sort of medical doctor, uh, when Caitlin asked where would someone get a prosthetic like that, hmm, uh, Caitlin says, hmm, uh, thank you, I think it was, yeah, uh, RH says no problem, uh, you mentioned that the suspect appeared on well, can you elaborate? Okay, so this is, um, okay, so the suspect says, uh, eyes bugged out, sweating, frothing at the mouth. Caitlin then asked, have you ever seen anyone like this before? And, yeah, the suspect says, have you ever been to the Undercity? And Caitlin says, I haven't been there yet. RH says, I mean, I, you should visit sometime. So this has to be relating to, like, uh, Shimmer, maybe. Uh, so this wasn't an isolated incident. And suspect said, I said all I'm going to say. And Caitlin then said, you need to tell me more, I can help you. And the suspect says, the fact that you think you can means you definitely can't. I mean, you're not wrong there, maybe. <laughs> you're high likely not wrong there, sir. Okay. Is this Shimmer? Probably so. It does have to be, it, prob it probably is uh, related to Shimmer. All right. Oh, there's our tags. What is this? Okay. Uh, ever. Um. Okay. This is the. St this is still the incident of free. Uh, thirty twenty one article note evidence number nine. Uh, they found. Uh, and location was. Um, is not specified. Um, where this article was found? Warehouse. Uh, office. Okay. Wait. Whoa. 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 Investigating Officer Marcus. So Marcus was in this case. All right. Okay, what does it say? Um, I warned you what happens if you don't pay back what you owe. Don't bother going to one of my compatriots for help. You don't have a leg to stand on it. And there's a smiley face at the end. Smack. Or smeech or smack. Smeech. So this may be relating to Marcus' involvements or Marcus's deal with Silco. Because in the series, he was uh, working with Silco so that he can protect his family. And Warwick was like, listen. And I think Silco kind of unle told Singe to unleash Warwick so that he can, like, Send a message to Marcus of saying, "Listen, this is what happens when you double cro when you cross me, when you cross the line with me." So that's good. I don't know what that symbol is. Maybe the stamp of the enforcers or something, but I'm not really sure. Okay, so who's Smeech? Uh, who does he work with? Who does he work for? There's the title of the archives for Caitlin. Okay, so that's the first thing done. Um, in plain sight. Okay. Seven sections. Okay, what is this? What does it say? Uh, missing person report. Okay, so this is a reporting of a person that got has gone missing. Uh, he was an adult. Uh, Date and time of report crossed out. Uh, last contact uh, was crossed out. Uh, report number 593. Okay. Uh, report type uh, abduction. Okay, so report type, it was an abduction. Uh, category uh, prior missing. It was uh, voluntary. It was. It is an urgent case. X at risk. Um, it is also a runaway, unknown circumstance. Uh, name crossed out. Uh, Dob is crossed out. Uh, eye color is brown. 
Um, no scars, marks, or tattoos. Uh, was human. Uh, casual wear. Uh, she was female. Short uh, hair color. She was blonde. Uh, she was pretty thin. And corrective lens. Uh, yes, so she was wearing glasses then. Uh, known associates unknown. Uh, last known location was at school. Reporter's name is crossed out. Relationship to reportee. Okay, so so this is a person's uh, daughter's has gone missing. Addresses across and reporting officers crossed out. Uh, possible destination unknown. It's under here. Uh, did the officer have any intent uh, in finding her? What would have happened if this child had been from Piltover? All right, this is getting interesting. Okay. Uh, rejected by... <laughs> Order of Captain Marcus. Yeah, good God, Marcus. God damn it, Marcus. So this is so now this is related to Silco. I'm pretty sure this is re uh, all related to Silco. Piltover Enforcer Department uh, data crossed out. File two uh, 2098. Uh, that's the uh, file number. Uh, press release abduction ring in the other city. Under city. Okay. On blank, a Piltover Enforcer. Uh, on a route on a route patrol was alerted to strange noises coming from the sewage track uh, sewage tracks running between the fissures and the streets above backed up was deemed unnecessary and the enforcer proceeded to investigate the disturbance okay so he didn't bother calling for backup bad idea already entering the pipes the enforcer followed the noise a sort of mechanical wearing Add that he hear, add that he heard crying too. Okay, so he heard cries as well. The enforcer gave a verbal warning that he was marching forward. There was no response. Okay, of course, because why would they respond? <laughs> uh, the enforcer continued deeper down into the lanes. They reached a wall uh, obstructed by a large metal gate. The enforcer brute forced the gate open and proceeded down a dark path. Uh, passage in the waste management system. Uh, sometime down the path, the enforcer was alerted to a bright light coming through a crack in the wall. Moving several bricks aside, they entered into what appeared to be a makeshift hospital. Singe? Is this singe? It has to be singe, or it may... It, it has... It, I mean, come on, it has to be singe. Uh, in the... Crossed in the hospital that's crossed out. Uh, several children were sat or changed to strapped to or, or strapped to beds and hooked up to machinery. Syringes at the arms, legs, and neck injected a grayish green liquid into their squirming bodies. At this time, the pilt over enforcer suspect that the children were part of a scientific experiment. It's cinch! It's freaking Singe. This is Singe's hideout. Okay, so he like made his way through to like one of the many parts of Singe's hideout. God freaking damn it. Okay. Uh, upon safe return to Piltover, one child was identified as blank. A missing child reported over a month ago. They were reunited with their mother, a citizen of Zon. The other children have yet to be identified. The illegal operation has been shut down and all equipment confiscated for extermination by Piltover enforcement. Any potential lead should be reported to the authorities. God freaking damn it, it's Singe. And it got shut down by Marcus. Because Marcus doesn't want this to be surfaced. He doesn't want Silco to know that the enforcers are getting a lead. Fuck. Oh, man, this is so good. Okay. Were the children there voluntarily why was it shut down how did the officer just stumble on the hospital tipped off who is running the operation it's fucking singe <laughs> it's freaking singe who's running this yet yeah, it's cam tank bear it's it's, it's singe it ha it, it's legit singe uh cam chemical uh technology that's the article uh number uh, 4435 evidence number 11 uh, datum found location, that is uh, crossed out. Uh, location found, uh, defunct uh, sanatorum. Uh, defunct sanatorum, there we go. 
uh, investigating officer Marcus. Freaking Marcus! <laughs> okay, chem tank uh, barons. Uh, why are they experimenting with shimmer? Suits looks too big for children because it's adults. And in the series, these were, these things were used sort of like the like stationary guards or stationary like reinforcements. And if they get activated, they get awakened by Shimmer because they're like technically like brain dead. And it was thanks to Shimmer that they are like they're functioning again, and they are basically being used as like um, soldiers, like super soldiers. Okay, transcript of record, uh, recorded interview. Uh, date is unknown. Uh, date is crossed out. Late, uh, location, Office of Pilt Over Enforcement. Uh, uh, persuasion to case, uh, 4435. Alright, so this is another interview. Um, we are now recording. This is Officer Crossed Out. Okay, so this is a, unknown, this is a unknown officer. Uh, can I get your full name for the record? For the record. Uh, BGW is an... Name's crossed out. Uh, enforcer. You're gonna tell me the truth, right? You know the difference between right and wrong. And, of course, they said yes. Because it's a natural thing to say yes to that. Uh, because, like... Uh, enforcer says, good. If you cooperated with the enforcers, that's how we can help you. And he said he knows. Um, you seem like a smart kid. Uh, start at the beginning. Uh, I have trouble breathing. A lot of kids in the fissures do, and it's because that, and it's because that uh, the Undercity or Zon is extremely polluted. Like it's just smog, and they're just breathing in smog daily. Like it's not oxygen or clean air. Um, they um, they offered me a chance to be healthier, and the enforcer. Okay, so these are like I think classified. I think that's why they're crossed out. Uh, the kids started to cough. So, you're saying that they lied? The chemicals, what did they do? The kid says he doesn't know. Uh, the enforcer says, was it shimmer? Or asked, was it shimmer? Um, it's not like any shimmer I, I'd seen before, the kid uh, says. Uh, how was it different? It, it powered their machines. These illegal experiments... And the kid says, yes, in a reluctant voice, I think. Um, and did you ever catch a glimpse of who was running uh, the things? Uh, uh, who was running things? She wore a suit. It was a she. And someone, uh, and someone unknown officer stopped the recording. I think I may know who said stop recording. I think it was, so I think it was Marcus. Okay, so that's in the transcript. What's the questions? Does Shimmer have any other uses? What does what uh, doesn't the what doesn't the uh, department want me to know? Because fucking Marcus. <laughs> All right, Piltover Enforcement uh, Piltover Enforcement Department uh, Disciplinary Action Report File eight hundred and ninety four uh, Rank Title Officer. Okay, so this is about Caitlin uh, Caitlin Caraman. Uh, serial number th uh, 3908, unit uh, C022, file number 804. Oh, this is... Oh, okay, so these are like allegations against her now. Allegation, violation of Piltover Enforcement Department policy and procedures. Persuasion uh, to uh, standards and duties, employee will respect superior officers and follow the chain of command. So, yeah, they're now allegating on Caitlyn because she is, like, doing, like, illegal, sort of, quote-unquote, illegal investigations. Like, she's doing her own investigations without informing the higher-ups or the higher commands because that's what she does. Even in the Arcane event, she was doing her own uh, investigation on, like, on Silco. So this has to be, this still has to be related to it, uh, I'm pretty sure. Specification. This discipline uh, is based on repeated transgressions and violations of enforcement policy or enforcer policies. Um, in the latest instances, you were found rummaging through files to a case that you were not assigned. 
you were told repeatedly that closed cases are only to be re uh, reopened by lieutenants and captains. You were also warned that sub. Uh, <clears throat> you were also warned that uh, subsequent uh, infractions would result in disciplinary actions. Yet you continue to disturb the process that allowed officers' uh, jobs to run smoothly. Stay in your lane, Kiraman. And someone's signature was si uh, was closed off. Yeah, so this is like saying, hey, stop meddling in cases that you're not assigned to. Stick to whatever job you're assigned to, uh, Lady Kiraman Caitlin. What the frick is that? I can't tell what that is. Is that like syringe? I'm not sure. Let's read what it is. Who is Rennie? Do they work for Smeech or Smeech? Does Smeech work for them? Okay, what does this say? Experimental suit for use by Rennie only. So I think I'm pretty sure Rennie is like a test subject then. I think. Uh, article te uh, chemical technology 4435. That's the case number. Evidence number 11. Uh, crossed out. Uh, where this article was found. Uh, defunct uh, sanatorium. Investigating officer Marcus. God fucking damn it. It's Marcus again. So Marcus is like investigating like. I think he's like pretending that he's investigating this. And he's like oh there's no more evidence. I, we might as well just close this case. I think that is... I'm pretty sure that's what Marcus is doing. This is so cool. Double-crossed. Who dad? Is that Singe? No, it's not Singe. He doesn't wear a hat. Uh, criminal profile work in progress. Cross. Uh, Officer Kierman. Okay, so this is still Caitlyn. Uh, what does it say? Though Cross's real name is unknown, the criminal has made a name for himself in the Undercity. He's the leader of a highly organized and dangerous gang, as ruthless as he is clever. He originally hails from Piltover, but the opportunities presented uh, in the Undercity were more favorable to his skill set and personality. What follows is a collection of information largely focused on his most infamous former hitmen uh, intended to uh, help... Uh, <clears throat> To help dedicated officers track down this wanted offender. Okay, so this is uh, information about Cross, then, a criminal uh, gang leader. Um, partial transcript of recorded interview. Date is unknown. Uh, Persuaded case number... And there's no uh, designated number. Officer Piltover Enforcement. That's the location. Okay. Enforcer, please state your name for the rec uh, recording. And E, so that's the initials. So the initials is uh, crossed out. Enforcer's name is also crossed out. What happened to the other guy? I want to talk to him. And the enforcer asks, what other guy? Oh, god damn it. Uh, I want to talk to him. Uh, what other guy? I want to... What other guy? I want to talk to him. And suspect says, never mind. Uh, tell me about uh, the man you work for. Cross, what do you want to know? What is he like as a boss? Uh, enforcer asks. Uh, he keeps us honest. Uh, not afraid to do the hard work. Uh, did you know that he's from Piltover? Uh, suspect says yes. Uh, he... Okay. Uh, enforcer then asks, and does... And that doesn't change your opinion on him. He may he may come from up here, but he is a citizen of the nation of Zon. Oh, because yeah, because Zon is not independent yet. It's still considered one city, one city of like, it's still considered one city. Like Zon is not even independent yet, and in, and the enforcer was taken off guard. It was like what, and. The suspect got up. An independent nation. 
if we don't get the luxuries of living under you, why should we be enforced by your laws? Should we not make our own? A government that works for us instead of against us? Enforcer then yells, sit down. And he's like, yes, okay, I'll sit, I'll sit back down. Is that what Cross wants to do? Start his own nation? Suspect says, no, not Cross. And Enforcer said, is it someone else? Is it someone? Is it his boss? And of course, Suspect is not telling. You expletive. Okay. Um, Enforcer then says, we have you for life uh, for numerous hits. You took out everyone that crossed him, eh? The suspect says uh, he was damn good at it, too. Okay, so this suspect is a hitman, then, for Cross. Not so good at uh, getting caught, though, for certain taunts. Um, you know, I've heard the food in the prisons ain't much worse than the stuff they serve in the fissures. Uh, Enforcer then says, I think we might be able to get the uh, judge to take another look at your case. 20 years ain't so bad next to uh, the next 50. And suspect says he's not turning. Um, you seem uh, jitty. How long has it been? A couple of days? I don't know. What you're ta I don't know what you're talking about, uh, suspect says. Uh, Shimmer's a hell of a thing, isn't it? I'm not saying expletive, expletive, expletive. Shame. Okay. So I, so he is a dick Shimmer, and he is a hitman. Which officer does any want to talk to? Why? Can't find anyone in the system matching uh, this, uh, Pert's description. What happened to him? Was he killed? I'm pretty sure he might have been killed. Uh, route to organized crime, incident number 9393, Piltover Enforcer Department, incident information, and everything's crossed out. Victim information. Uh, human, that's the victim's type. Uh, name, Mon, Mon Polrent. Or Polarant. There we go. Mon Polarant. Um, within uh, middle age. Uh, he's a male. Eye color is purple. Shimmer. Uh, short and black hair. Has a mustache. Uh, medium weight. Uh, several tattoos. Uh, offense, uh, offenses. Victim of gang violence and, homo and illegal word. I'm not going to say that word. I don't want to get demonetized. Weapon involved. A meat hook. Suspect's information. Uh, unknown, eye color, uh, everything's just not specified. And uh, and the name is also unknown. Okay, crime narrative. A uh, victim was found dead in storage fridge of uh, Polarant's meats. Uh, anonymous employee discovered his boss around dawn, hanging from a meat hook and entering the stages of liver mor uh, mortis. He immediately contacted the authorities. In interrogation, uh, in interrogation, employee uh, informed authorities that his boss, Mr. Polarant, owned owed uh, money to several undercity gangs. He was reportedly attempting to expand his business to several other locations. Investigators discovered a progress day pin at the scene stained in the victim's blood. There are no suspected uh, links between the victim and the Piltoven event. Okay, so Mr. Um, Polarant wanted to expand his business and he made a deal with these gangs. Uh, if that, if he, you know, gets more, uh, gives them more money, uh, more branches will be open and equals more money for him, I guess. Victim was expanding businesses must have been in talks with heads of the industry or business owners. Track down lists of uh, industrialists in the Undercity. Maybe they know more? Maybe they'd know more. 
Okay, this next autopsy. Okay, autopsy report. Uh, victim, uh, Mon Polaran. That's the victim. That's the victim who got uh, killed. Address ninety twenty uh zero uh nine zero uh eight two B three eighty eight seventy six two. Ages crossed out. Human. Wait. Yep. Same information. Yeah. Autopsy report. Uh. Gaping a uh, wound in upper back. Victim was found uh, sus suspended on a hook that had pierced through the tear's major and through the tear's major muscle, uh, and into the and, and into the right lung. Damn. Probable cause of death: internal hemorrhage. Uh, internal hemorrhaging. Um, route to organized crime, uh, number, uh, 11136, built over enforcer department, uh, all crossed out. Victim information. Okay, so this is another case. Uh, height is medium. Uh, height of the case, I think, is medium. I think that's what you're trying to say. Uh, race was human. Name, Lan Dreadnought. Okay, that's his name. Uh, male, mid Round middle age, blue eye colors, uh, hair length uh, is white and it's medium. He has a goatee, a uh, heavy set of weight. He's heavy heavy set when it comes to weights. No tattoos, no scars. Uh, offense victim of gang violence and illegal word. Uh, weapon involved, none. Suspect information. Everything is crossed out as usual. Or, again... Crime narrative. Uh, workers at the 9th Street bathhouse notice a foul smell coming from one of the steaming pools. Upon investigation, they discovered the body of Mr. Dreadnought clogging the filters. Kroner's cause of death was listed as drowning, though it appears his body was. M oh god. It appears that his body was mutilated afterwards to uh, contort into the filter pod. Uh, Dreadnought was a regular at the bathhouse, and it's primarily and it's primarily a shareholder. Okay, so he was like regular in the bathhouse, so he goes here every day or regularly. The business had recently opened its shares to the public. Investigators discovered a progress day pen stuffed in the adjacent filter pod. Um, it is recommended that the investigating officer refer to the case filed 9393. So th the last case that we just read. So it's linked to this. What is the pin significance? All right, next. All right, so this is the pin. That's the enforcer's pin. What's this say? Uh, progress day pin, evidence number three. Uh, that's the case number. Uh, location was in the bathhouse. Investigating officer fucking Marcus again. Marcus, what are you up to? Oh my god, is this another case? If this is this ha yeah, it's another case. Uh victim information, he was human, name Farron Rivard, uh, Rev uh Rivaro. Uh Farron Rivaro. Male, eye color is blue, he's middle age, long brown hair, long beard, his weight is medium, scar on on the upper jaw, um, gang violence, assault, and battery. Offense uh, offenses victim of that, and weapons involved are none. Um, oh, okay. Suspect's name. Uh, he is male, and his name is Nero Esso. Enforcer Blank was on his nightly beat uh, through uh, the Undercity when a scream rang out. From a nearby uh, nondescript uh, building, the officer rushed inside to find a man, later later identified as Nero Esso, uh, lording over a makeshift operating table. The officer then saw another man, Farron Rivaro, uh, uh, strapped to the table. The f or is he doing like the Joker thing to him or something? 
Uh, the officer raised his firearm and instructed Esso to get on the ground. The suspect comp uh, complied. The officer reported the suspect had a very nonchalant attitude. Okay, so he didn't really care that he was getting arrested then. Backup arrived on the scene shortly thereafter and helped to book Esso. It was at the same time that enforcers carefully removed the straps and medical equipment around Rivaro. Investigators noted that Mr. Rivaro's mouth had been amateurly sawed shut. Oh, that's what he was doing to him? Okay. With copper wire? Oh, God, that hurts. Oh, and how firm copper wires are? God damn it. The wire continued down the length of Rivaro's neck. Oh, was he, like, trying to strap on, like, conductors in his neck? Like, electric uh, conductors? Um, where it entered into the skin, connecting to a small mechanical device at the top of his spine. Medical experts on staff determined the wire not only functioned to keep Rivaro from speaking, but also, if removed, would trigger the device, causing a deadly explosion. Was he building a freaking suicide bomb into this guy? I'm pretty sure he was. As the suspect, he too remained silent. The only contraband confiscated at booking was a progress day pin. A uh, partial transcript of recorded interview. Okay, this is a short interview. Okay. Uh, enforcer, what's the significance of the pins? The guy says... Oh, it's N.E. It's the same guy from the last interview. Okay. So, oh, that pin. We found... Enforcer says, we found them... Uh, we found them at all of your hits. They're from all progress days. Oh, that's where they're from. I think he's playing dumb. I think he's trying to play dumb. So, it wasn't your idea? No, no way. Boss told me to do it. Cross the other guy. So he's, so it's not Cross that gave him the order to put the progress day pins there. It was his way of playing a little bit of a joke on Cross, I think. How so? Enforcer question. A reminder of where he came from and who he really is. So it has to be an other guy. So it has to be another guy and not Cross. Because if that's the case, they're using the pins to taunt Cross. Like, you're nothing but the... from, like, Piltover, the top side. You're not one of us, basically. That's what they're trying to say. Progress day pin note. Pin... Oh, there's a note. Evidence number seven. That's the case number. Regards S. Okay, but the investigating officer is Marcus again. Who's S? Is that Singe? I'm pretty sure it's still. I'm still. I'm, are we still on the Singe case here? <gasps> Who is S? Oh God! It's another interview. Partial recorded interview. Uh, yep. Uh, persuade him to case uh, 9222. So this is a different case then. Enforcer, you're known. You're a known associate to Mr. Esso. Sure. N M A. Those are the initials. Uh, sure. We were co-workers. You were. He's retired. But you still work for Cross. I never said that. You work for an S person. A what? Enforcer slides over evidence number seven. Scroll, please. Okay, there we go. Okay. Who does the S refer to? Speech? He laughs. Uh, what's so funny? Keeps laughing. Enforcer says, answer me. S ain't sme uh, speech. That's... That Yordle's just a lieutenant. We wouldn't let him govern us like you uh, like you do up here. So who is it? Why why are you asking me? He got he's just got he's got just 
as many people working for him topside as he does in the fissures. Get your expletives out of the square for once and you'll find him. He's not trying to hide anymore. It's fucking Cinch. God damn, I knew it. So the S is Cinch. Because in the lore, Cinch is a is a well-respected Pilt Oven professor by day, but a mad scientist in Zaun by night. It's Cinch! Okay, so it is Cinch. Alright, let's finish this. Find S, find the mole. Holy crap. Okay. So to wrap things up, all of these things are now sort of are now linked to pretty much Singe. And Caitlin is doing her own independent investigation um, out of the orders of the higher ups of, of the Piltover enforcement. But Marcus is the mold because Silco made a deal with Marcus that if you cross the line and if you cross our line, your family is dead. That's why Marcus is making deals with Silco. And and that last interview in um, in Double Cross, it explains that Singe, it, it explains Singe's lore indirectly that he's not trying to hide. Because he's a he's a Pilt Oven professor. This is really cool. I really love this, and this is all also relating to Warwick as well from like the first like, like the first case. Or like the second first case, I think. Like it was, it's all relating to Singe's experiment on Warwick because Singe created Warwick. This is really cool. Okay, let's get back to the home screen now. All right, back here. All right, so that is it for this video, guys, and I really hope you enjoyed. How long was I recording? Holy crap, nearly an hour. I don't care if it's nearly an hour. This is so cool. All right. Anyways, uh, God, I'm really excited to where they would take Jinx, which is the last one. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video today, guys, and I really do hope you enjoyed me exploring Caitlyn's uh, files in the Council Archives. If you, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm, share this with your friends because this is getting, this is getting cool, and I'm really, really excited where they're gonna take this next. I'm really excited where Riot is gonna take this. Anyways, I hope to see you all again. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at RangerS64, and I'll see you all in the next one. Over and out.